Okay, what you just heard is an example of the DTMF signal. What is DTMF? Then Wikipedia answers. Dual Tone Multi-Frequency Signaling DTMF is a telecommunication signaling system using the voice frequency band over telephone lines between telephone equipment and other communications devices and switching centers. DTMF was first developed in the Bell system in the United States, and became known under the trademark touch tone for use in push-button telephones supplied to telephone customers, starting in 1963. The DTMF system uses a set of eight audio frequencies transmitted in pairs to represent 16 signals, represented by the 10 digits, the letters A to D, and the symbols hash and asterisk. As the signals are audible tones in the voice frequency range, they can be transmitted through electrical repeaters and amplifiers, and over radio and microwave links, thus eliminating the need for intermediate operators on long-distance circuits. How do we make DTMF? If you want to try the easiest way, you can use software like CoolEdit Pro. Let's try. Create new wave here. Click Generate menu, then click DTMF signals. We will try to make a signal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. As you can see, we now have 5 DTMF signals. This is signal 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now let's hear it. Again. Now we will try to create a DTMF signal with different characters. We create new wave, again. Now we change the tone time and break the time. Now let's hear it. Again. We hear different 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 signals. This happens because we created DTMF with the parameters we entered earlier. Where earlier we changed the parameters for the tone time and break time. What is tone time and break time? Tone time is the duration of each tone that we make. While break time is the duration between the silence tone to the next tone. Apart from Cool Edit Pro, of course you can try creating DTMF signals with other software. And now we will try to create a DTMF signal in a slightly complicated way. Namely with applications that we can customize according to needs. Now open your internet browser. Then go to topix.com. Here we will find a number of telephony libraries, such as DTMF Encoder, DTMF Decoder, etc. This is a paid library, and here we can see the price of each of these libraries. Some time ago, we have purchased several of them. The price of this product is very proportional, accordingly. In our opinion the price is comparable to the product. Some of the components that we buy, we use to create a number of telephone applications such as IVR system, phone logger, phone dialer, caller ID monitor, and many more. As seen here, the price of this component can be said to be very cheap, increasing its function and excellent features. Now we will download some of them, namely Wave X, Tone Encoder, and Tone Decoder. Sorry, I forgot. I forgot to introduce you a little to the features or functions of the library that we downloaded. This is wavex.net.
WaveX is a general-purpose wave audio control that can be used to play and record audio files. It supports many wave formats such as RIF MP3, GSM, CCITA LAW and MicroLaw etc. And this Tone Encoder.net. Tone Encoder is net componental to encode variant of tone signals such as DTMF, caller ID, users defined tones, TTY Bado, and so on. Then, this is Tone Decoder.net. Tone Decoder is the component that for tones decoding. It can decode DTMF touch tone. 1200 bits per second FSK caller ID signal, custom tones, TTY, TDD Bado code and so on. After downloading these libraries, we will then try to install them. After we install it, then we will open samples of the use of the library. We will get some sample usage from each library. We just need to learn a little bit and then complete it in the application that we are going to create. Even for those of you who are working on applications related to telephony for the first time, here we will find examples of programs that are quite complete. Continuing the focus of our discussion on creating or generating DTMF signals. We'll open an example of using the Tone Encoder library. This time, I will use Visual Basic as an IDE to run the library or sample usage of the library. As you can see, this is an example of a DTMF encoder or generator. This tone encoder component is paired with Wave X as its output. Or in other words, the tone that will be generated later will come out via Wave X. We will first enter the license key for each of these libraries or components. OK, we continue. In this form, next to the very top. There is a combo box. This combo box is used to store a list of audio out options that will be used. This is the start button to start activating the library, and this is the button to stop it. This is a group control, for example the caller ID generator. This is the caller ID format option namely MDMF or SMDF. If you want time information to be inserted in the caller ID then check the checkbox in this checkbox. This column is for filling in the number information. And this column is to fill in the name information. This is the control group for the DTMF generator example. This is the column to fill in the DTMF key that will be generated. And here's the group control for the custom tone generator example. This column is for the first frequency setting, and this is for the second frequency. On the right, for setting the timing on and off. This is control group, for example the signal TTY generator. Here there is a choice of mode settings and rates. And for the message you want to send, enter it in this column. OK, now we will try to run. Here you have to select the output sound or signal to be generated. 
then click the start button. Let's try to generate DTMF first. Can you hear it? We try with another DTMF key. Okay, just now we've tried the DTMF generator feature. Next, let's try the custom tone generator. We change the on off time a little. Before we try generator signal TTY, we will try the caller ID generator first. Can you hear it? Now we try to insert the timing information. We try other things. Now we will try the signal TTY generator. Now let's look at the code behind this sample program. We'll take a look at this part of the combo box. Here we see, when it was first run. First of all, Wave X will detect the device out list on the computer, and then fill in the combo box item. If the device out can be found, that device will be directed as the Wave X component output. The Wave X component is then set to the destination or outgoing signal generated by the tone encoder library. If you are interested, please learn more about the code in this sample later. We'll try to add some buttons. We will make a kind of keypad, like the keypad on a telephone. We add a number of buttons here. Watch when we run then, he's like this. We copy and paste. We write each key, like the keypad we are used to seeing, the numbers 0 to 9, plus the asterisk and hashtag keys. Next we write the program code. We will write a command in the form of event when the button is clicked. As follows.
We do it for each button. Of course there is a shorter program routine. But now I am writing them down one by one, so that you can see them more easily. Now all buttons are coded. We will try to test. This is just a very simple example. Please learn it yourself later. There are many things that can be developed from the use of this DTMF technology. Not only in the form of a telephony system like this. There are many creative things that can be built. Thank you for watching this video. We are waiting for your comments. Don't forget, support us. Click the like button and share. Subscribe if you are not our subscriber yet.